们刚刚特别提到，在这场美国总统大选，第一个是宾州定天下，而宾州里头有不确定的选民，就尚未决定的选民，将会成为最重要的，很可能一小撮，不到四个 percent， 三个 percent 的。宾州的选民决定这场美国的总统大选，而谁是不确定的选民呢？这一场二十年来最激烈的选战，也是大选剩下不到五十天的情况之下，川贺全国、摇摆州都接近平手，差距都太少，尤其是宾州。于是未决定的选民成为关键。那民主党希望 Taylor Taylor Swift 带入年轻的女性选票，可以。赢得宾州，而 PBS 所做的民调观察里头，性别、物价、移民这三个议题是最影响未决定选民的。那性别的部分，女性偏向贺锦丽，男性偏向川普。物价的部分，目前刚好通货膨胀开始下降，这对贺锦丽是有利的。移民这个问题是完全是川普的议题，所以 undecided voter really undecided， 没有人知道结果是什么。We're going to tell Harris that we've had enough. Our country can't take it anymore, Comrade Kamala Harris. You're fired. You're fired. Get out. Get out. God bless you, and God bless the United States. 这是一场充满悬念的对决。总统大选只剩下不到五十天，却还不知道谁能入主白宫。The polls show the race is still a toss-up. The latest numbers from the New York Times and Siena College says that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are essentially tied. The same poll gives Harris a slight lead in the crucial state of Pennsylvania, but it is within the well within the statistical margin of error. You can see right in that particular poll, four percent of the electorate is undecided. There are fewer undecided voters at this point than in any cycle in the 21st century. So they're fighting over this sliver, tiny, tiny sliver. Now you will note in that Pennsylvania poll, the margin of error is plus or minus 3.8 percentage points, and Kamala Harris's lead is four. So you know it's right, sort of on that margin of error. 二零二四美国大选战是如此激烈，谁能当选，可能最后会落到这些极少数尚未决定的选民手上。如果你想争取这些尚未决定选民的选票，你得先知道他们是谁。When we talk about undecideds, how many people are we? How big is this block, and how are they still undecided? It is a tiny slice of people, right? I mean, we're talking in recent years anywhere from six percent who are genuinely persuadable to maybe the low teens, right? And really, in this election, given how people know so much about Donald Trump in particular, and when President Biden was running, it was a really, really small number of people. I mean, in our poll, it was like three percent of people who were undecided, and then when Harris. Got in. We saw a dip in that, and there were more people who moved to be undecided. But still, it was only about nine percent of people. But immediately after that, as soon as they started to see a little bit more about Kamala Harris, people started to make up their minds. So, in these big election events, post debate, for example, where are they now? Well, so in the NPR PBS News Maris poll, we had 46 people over the last several months who said that they were undecided. And what I did was reach out to 10 of them, and we had five men, five women. And after the debate, this was all post debate. Four of them said that they're now leaning toward Kamala Harris or that they're voting for her. Two of them said that they were leaning toward Trump. Four of them are undecided still, and three of them very well might not vote at all. What I found really interesting about this, when I start to look at it, clear takeaway is two things. One, the debate was really, really important for Kamala Harris because there were a lot of people who just didn't know enough about her, needed some reassurance maybe, and then made started to make their decisions. The other big takeaway is the gender divide is very, very real. All four of the people who said that they're going to now be voting for Harris or leaning toward her are women. You spoke to one woman in Arkansas who spoke to this, right? Tell us about her. Yeah,、uh, I talked to Janae Prophet、uh, from Arkansas, and she, she was very interesting. She said, "I feel that Trump's disrespect for women is not befitting a president. He is not someone I want my girls to look up to as a role model." She's 45 years old. She's a mother of five.、Uh, she did not vote in the 2020 election. She did vote for Donald Trump in 2016. I asked her if she's going to vote this time,、yeah. and she said that she has made up her mind to vote for Kamala Harris because of. Of how Trump talks about women. I asked her, but you didn't vote last time. How are you feeling about this election? She said, 
I really want my girls to see that this is a right and that she feels very strongly about the fact that this is a right that she needs to exercise. Interesting here you're seeing gender plays a role here, but what are some of the other issues that you think are going to impact these undecided votes? Yeah, I would say five of the people who I talk to just are not going to vote for Kamala Harris, but they have real hang-ups about Donald Trump, and that's why I think some of them just may not vote at all. Uh, one person that I talked to, Brady from Wisconsin, he's 30 years old, and he mentioned, as did a lot of these folks, about prices and immigration. He talked mostly about prices. He said, I've probably a middle-class income for my family, and it doesn't feel like it's getting any easier, even as my wife and I have advanced in our careers. And it's a real concern for people like Brady. Heard from another person, John in Miami, who in Florida, who said that he also just feels like it's, it's just too much. He's somebody who voted for Obama twice, says he worked the phones for him, but uh, this time around, he's just not sure what he's gonna do because, I, and I think when you look at this, a little bit is, you know, and I don't know how much of it's gender, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something to talk about, but I also think that it's a little bit about incumbency. In 2008, obviously the economy wasn't doing very well. George W. Bush was the president, he was a Republican, so these guys went with the Democrat and Obama. In this time around, you have Joe Biden who's in the White House, and even though Kamala Harris has really made the case for being the change agent, she's still tied to the administration. So the economy, immigration are clearly issues. 两位候选人都从未领先超过百分之五，可以想见，二零二四的选举之夜很可能会是一个漫漫长夜。Get out and vote. God bless you.